Shortstop, we set up on the inside. So I'm going to come right to the inside of the bag, choppy step, big target. I want him, if he's going to miss, miss to the inside. Don't cross me over with a runner, and we have that same problem. So I'm going to come right in, and it's going to be right foot to the ball. If he throws it right at me, I can probably just work a shuffle step off the base. Uh, then we work it just from the outside like we would a second baseman. Outside, working around here. But the big thing for a first baseman, a lot of times we put a player there that doesn't throw very well. We want to make that first baseman feel like he's got a big area that he can miss. He can miss way out here. We show him that here, I step out. Boom, step out with my right foot, and I'm ready to throw. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Now, shortstop pivots. Really only one specific way to pivot on a double play. The angle that we take to the base is going to determine on where the ball's hit. The ball's hit more in the hole, I can take a straight angle to the base, because now I'm in line with my player who's throwing the ball. Ball's back here, I want to take a little bit of a banana route. I want to work to the back corner of the base. And I'm going to run hard, and when I get about eight feet away, I'm going to start choppy step. My feet are going to be chopping, moving. I'm square to my target. I'm square. My upper body is square. I don't necessarily want to be totally square. I'm going to turn my hips towards first base. My upper body is going to be square to them. I'm choppy. Now I can work around the feet. If the feet is out here and it's a bad feet, I'm just going to say, whoop, I'm getting one. If the feet goes way on the inside, it would be the same thing. Here, I get one. I'm not out of control. I'm not flying across the base. This is going to enable me to get the ball in. Just like we tell the hitter, let the ball get deep. Same thing here. Don't reach out and catch the ball. Let the ball get deep. If I'm tagging a runner, I don't catch the ball and bring it back. The ball's going to travel further. Ball's going to travel further in the air that short distance. So I'm going to let the ball get deep. And once I see if it's a good feed, I can start getting my body around it. I can catch it and work right down towards first. We work with our guys. Everyone has the slide rule. Feet, arms, legs, body has to be straight into the base. Any contact outside or on this side is automatic double play. I'm inviting guys to make contact with me because I'm going to work right down the line of the base. I'm not going to be way out here until I'm in the major or minor leagues. So don't have your guys here jump out towards the ball, reach for it, and be way out here. And they have to turn their body all this way. We should be working on turning our body as the ball comes and work right down towards first base. I go hard to the base. Choppy step, watch my upper body and my lower body, how the difference is. And I'm right down the line. Now, it's important for you to follow through on your throws. There's no need to catch the ball, throw, and jump up in the air. No need for that, because if they make contact, it's, they're out. What I do teach is that we come down, and when we throw, we bring our right leg across almost jumping towards first base. I don't jump up in the air, I jump towards my target. So I'm going to catch the ball and come this way. You'll find that your ball will carry that extra, or that last fifth of the way will have a little bit extra on it. It's not going to die. You're taken away from your throw if you catch it and pop up in the air. The ball's going to fizzle at the end. Double plays right now. Double play feeds from the shortstop. We have quite a few on the ground ball to the shortstop. And we, we have our infielders start with the ball in their glove. We do it progressive. 
We start with ball and glove. They go through all the different feeds. Then I start rolling balls. After I've rolled them some balls, I may hit them some short fungals from the mound. Then I may move back. So we do it kind of progressively. But they have to know how to do this. This is a footwork drill. It's not so much arms or anything else. This is getting your feet in their proper position. So I'll start with the ball in my glove. And the first pivot, or the first feed, is going to be where I cheat open again with my left foot. I field the ball still left to center. Now sometimes people say, we field the ball on the right side of our body when we double play feed. That's not totally true. I may turn my body to open up towards second, and it looks like I'm feeling off my right foot, but my left arm is still straight down. I'm not reaching across. So right here, and I bring it up. Now I'm already open to my target, and I throw. Natural arm slot, your three-quarter arm slot. Do not, do not have your infielders catch the ball pivot and try to throw over the top. They're either going to throw high or they're going to miss low. It's more natural for them just to throw their natural arm slot. So this is what it's going to look like. Our feeds are up. Want to be up in the chest and head area. Our infielders ground ball, throw it up. We go backhand. So we go backhand. Backhand. Plant, throw. Always trying to keep our knees bent, staying low. As soon as I stand up, it's going to be one slower, two, probably won't get as much on the throw. You don't have to throw the ball real hard. You have to be crisp, smooth and crisp, more quick. Now we have our flips. We have a ground ball that stays hugging the ground. I'm going to field the ball right like this, maybe a little bit open, but my, I'm on the ground. I'm going to feed right from the ground. And when I feed, I try to keep my wrist stiff, try to keep my elbow stiff. There shouldn't be a whole lot of rotation on the ball. Okay? You don't want to flick it with your wrist at the end. You're going to hold the ball like you're holding a can of Coke. You're going to hold it right like that. Shovel. You don't go bowling. You use your legs and your seat, your rear end, to get the power on the flip. So when we go right straight from the ground, catch the ball down, I catch it, then go. If I try to do it too fast, I wind up walking through it, I wind up popping up, and I don't get as much on the ball. So I'm going to catch the ball, drive right from there, follow my flip. Ground ball, right up there. Put something on it. Not a bad idea to yell flip so he knows I'm flipping it so he's not back on his heels. Now that ground ball, that same ground ball at the last second may come up a little bit. Ties me up, now I have to clear my feet. Clear my feet before I flip. And we work on all these. Ground ball comes up a little bit, clear my feet, shovel. We go ball up the middle. Ball up the middle, they catch it, backhand feed, thumb underneath. We go hard, and you, you ideally want to feed the ball up, up, and you got to give you got to make sure that you know that you're going in one direction, so you want to feed the ball up so it doesn't tail off as much. We've got a high chopper. High chopper up the middle, sometimes we may just get one. And that's going to be the call of some of these other infielders, so let me know. We might have a big slow guy at first, want to keep a double play in order. We work on coming to the ball, and we field it deep. I don't catch it in front of me now. I let it get deep. So I can flip right there, right around the corner. Speed it up a little bit. I come up. I kill it deep. We maybe only get one. You've got to open up, show him the ball, whether it's a flip or whether it's a pivot feed. I have to show him the ball. The further away, 
the further away, it's not going to matter as much. He's going to have time to react. We've got to show him the ball. You can catch the ball one-handed. But on a high chop, you'll see a lot of times a guy come in, and he catches the ball one-handed. Catches the ball one-handed, then he has to have a tough transfer throw. He maybe doesn't get a good grip on the ball. So we're always going to catch it, two hands, and we're going to get our body in position to throw before we catch the ball. So again, we'll move up. And I might even start turning my body a little bit, catch. So it's just one step in the throw in the high chain. Get, to the, get behind the ball. Go hard, get behind the ball. If the ball is up, if its ball is to your right and up, maybe the toughest play for an infielder. Ball at shortstop, ball at second baseman. He has to go to his right, up, and now turn and throw in the opposite direction. We're going to do the same thing. Rather than rounding the ball this way and coming through, slow roll, one-handed, do or die, okay, that takes a long time. That's a long path to the ball. We're going to cut down that path by going as the backhand. We tell our guys to go a direct path behind the ball that's going to get them behind, not to where they think they can meet it, but a little bit behind it. Because our idea is to get behind it and then come back through towards first base. So we go hard to this point behind, go hard to this point behind, the ball is rolling, now I can get here, pick it up, and I cross behind on this play, throw to first. That's the only time that I cross behind. Again, you've got to judge how hard the ball's hit. Ball's hit hard enough, you're going to take that angle, up, catch it, go behind. You may not know that you can do that. When the ball's hit, you're just going in that direction. If I get to a point behind the ball, and the ball's still pretty far up there, now I can just go get it and come back through to first. Other times, I may just be getting to the ball here and field it a little bit deeper. Okay? Get to where you're behind the ball, then you can react, get going to first base. Infielders, I always talk about our infielders, I want them to be like cats. If you ever watch a cat walk, you can't hear them. Real soft feet. Soft feet, but quick. That's what an infielder has to be. If you hit fungos to an infielder and then you come back out here and look at the, the dirt and it looks like a war zone or it looks like the moon and all chopped up and everything, your infielder's got heavy feet. Heavy feet don't equal quick feet. So we want to have our infielders stay light on their feet. You're going to be light on your feet. You should be able to move around light on your feet and not chew up the dirt so much. And when you do, you place it so you can position your players that way. But the pre-ready position, one of the most important. Getting signals from coaches, relaying signals, maybe helping position uh, an outfielder, one of the most important things. From there, we go into our ready position. In our ready position, all we want to do is walk into it and get a little movement when the ball's in the hitting zone. We walk, we go right, left, and we get a little bit of hop. So again, our head is up, our knees are going to be bent, our glove is going to work at the highest about the hip. And you can have your glove opened up, or you can have it turned to the side. It doesn't matter. But we're going to walk into our, our red. So once I get set, I've got my eyes on the pitcher. I'm going to take a right, left, and a little bit of hop. My glove is going to be basically right at the hip. I don't have to have my glove extended. If I have my glove extended, the ball's hit. I don't go for a ball with my glove, so I have to bring my glove back in. So start with your glove right here at your hip. Right, left, and you're right there. Now, my feet are going to be pretty much parallel. My right foot could be staggered back just a little bit to help me on this backhand move. 
the weight of my feet is going to be on the balls of my feet and on the insides of my feet. I don't want to be just on the balls of my feet. I want to have great balance. Over and over during this infield session, you'll hear us talk about balance. You heard it yesterday about pitching. You heard it yesterday during the hitting talk. Balance is the key for an infielder. When we go out recruiting and we look at infielders, the first thing that we kind of focus in on is their feet. An infielder has to have great feet. More so than good hands, more, more so than a strong arm. Infielder that has good feet is going to be able to position himself to have soft hands. So we've got our weight on the insides and the balls of our feet. Our knees are going to be inside our feet. Some people teach it to be open a little bit so they feel like they can go either way. If your feet, knees are inside feet, I can push off both ways. And I can cross over both ways. Glove is going to be hip to the knee, and my hand's going to be relaxed. Have to be relaxed in this position. Just like a hitter, when you talk about him hitting, his hands have to be relaxed. Same thing here. We don't want to get tensed up. When we walk into it, it's just going to be a right, left. We're not gaining a whole lot of ground. We had an infielder who used to take a huge right step drag his left foot and jump into the hitting zone when the ball's in the hitting zone. All that did was it cut his distance down so his angles were off and he got too much motion forward. So when his first step and the ball's hit, he had to take a false step. He never really got a good crossover step. So it really cut down his range. All we want to do is get ourselves in this position. We're going to hop a little bit when the ball is in the hitting zone. If any of you guys have played tennis, if you had to return my serve, this probably wouldn't be the case because I can't serve it all. But if you watch the guys on TV, those guys are serving tennis ball about 120, 130 miles an hour. If you look at the returner, someone who's going to return to serve, boy, they're, they're bent over usually, and then they straighten up at the end. But they're always moving their feet. You have to have movement. You have to break inertia. Okay, a body at rest tends to stay at rest. So we have to have some kind of movement. Knees will be bent. You're going to be more upright. Your back will be slightly bent. Right here, just a right, regular athletic position. Whether you're playing defense on basketball or you're playing... We have uh, two ways of warming up. One is our narrow four-cornered catch that we're going to demonstrate at this time. All right, go ahead, start it off. This is basically our infielders warming up, and we're putting our emphasis on quick feet, round action. You're trying to keep your body behind the ball at all times. In this manner, you don't take too long to get warmed up. We can get warmed up here in about five minutes, and as you progress, you lengthen out, you lengthen the distance. You find a lot of infielders are out there playing catch for 20 minutes. This way you're trying, you're maintaining game speed. This is our second way of playing catch, wide four-cornered catch with the emphasis again on footwork, round action, and throwing the ball. Keeping the body behind the ball as much as possible. If the person doesn't have a grip on the ball, he's going to have to take an extra skip. All right, start it off. You'll notice that when the ball is thrown to the infielder's right, it's right-left throw with the infielder getting his body behind the ball as much as possible. When the ball is thrown at you or to your left, it's skip and throw. and then in the eighth inning, and he's up 